This is the Gasmate WaterTech hot water system. I'm gonna tell you about all the features and how to use it. Let's get started. Get it. G'day folks, I've got the Gasmate WaterTech hot water unit set up, or hot water system set up next to me here. I've got it standing on the optional stand the Gasmate make for it, so you can set this up in your campsite next to your vehicle, tent, sh your, your shower tent, whatever you want. You can have hot water no matter where you set up camp. I'm gonna show you how to use it and all the features in a sec, but we'll run through a few of the basics first. This is the unit here, it measures about 40 centimeters from the top to sort of the bottom of where these, uh, these plugs stick out at the bottom here. About 29 centimeters in width and about 14 centimeters in depth. That doesn't include the, the knobs on the front here. Now the, the output of the unit is about three liters or it is three liters um, per minute from the unit here, but the pump itself is actually an eight liter per minute pump. Now they limited the flow of the water through the unit to make sure that the hot water actually reaches temperature. If the water's flowing too fast, the heat exchanger inside can't heat the water up quick enough. So to consume about 538 grams of gas per hour from your gas bottle, which is about 16 hours from a nine kilo bottle or almost 200 showers. I've got it today connected to just a 1.25 kilo gas bottle which is going to give, be more than enough for a family of four to shower for a weekend. Now it comes with various hoses you get a five meter power hose here that can go to a I've got this plugged into the back of my vehicle at the moment so five meters to the vehicle you get a one and a half meter hose to the pump. Now this pump, Gasmate recommend you just use clean water with it. They don't, they haven't set this up to be able to pump from streams or rivers or that sort of thing. The shower hose is a two meter long shower hose. It's just got a single setting. It doesn't have adjustable settings on here and it's got the on off switch on here, which is what um, makes, it turns the unit on and off once you've got all the gas and power connected to it. And just a couple of other things on the pump before I go any further. This is a good quality water tech pump. It's not one of those cheapo ones that um, tend to burn out, it's a brushless pump. If something does happen to it, you can replace this pump. They're available as a spare part. Now, as I mentioned, um, Gasmate don't, haven't made this unit to operate by sucking water from a creek or a dam because of the sediment. They like to, they say prefer to use uh, fresh water or clean water with this. Um, and you can't attach it directly to a mains water outlet. Uh, main reason being that it's not designed to operate at water at that pressure. To be able to do that, you'd have to put a, a pressure reducer down to about 0.6 MPA, but there's nothing readily available necessarily to do that. Some other brands might make something, but it's not, it doesn't come with the unit. You'd have to get an adapter to make that happen. Now, moving on a little bit further to the actual unit up here. Now, the whole thing weighs about five kilos. This is a powder coated steel outer on here. I'll just put my wet hands all over it. And there's three dials on the front and a little outlet temperature gauge here. So the three dials are the gas. This is your gas control. Um, now there's a little, it, it takes a little while to get used to sort of how to use this or how to get the most out of it. But you've got a minimum and a maximum for winter and also a maximum for summer. So summer gas control can go all the way around and winter will only go to here. If you go any higher than that on winter, it's actually gonna cut out because the temperature rating will go over 50 degrees. AGA gas laws depict that it has to cut out at a certain temperature, which is about 50 degrees plus or minus a percentage. So if you wind that up any further, it would go too hot uh, and it wouldn't be legal. So it actually cuts out if it goes much higher than that. Now, when I talk winter and summer, that's to do with this dial here. There's a summer mode and a winter mode. When this is on winter, the heat exchange inside is operating at 100%. So you're getting the most efficiency out of the unit. Uh, in terms of water temperature, but it's using more gas. Now the, the unit will raise the temperature of ambient water by about 25 degrees up to, as I mentioned, a maximum of about 52 degrees. Now, if you're in summer and the water's already warm, you don't need to be burning through that much gas. So you can just turn it around to the summer setting here, and that reduces the performance of the heat exchanger inside to about 70%. So you're not using as much gas, you're gonna get a longer use out of it. It's just not gonna raise the temperature quite as far. However, if you're in winter and you're using below 10 degree water, you're probably gonna want this on the winter setting so that you can raise the water up to a temperature that makes for a comfortable shower. Bearing in mind that the normal shower is probably around about 34 to 38 degrees. And lastly, this dial on the right hand side here is the water setting. So um, high to low setting there. To get the unit started, which we'll do now, we need to have the water on high and the gas on low. 
There's a little quick start guide sticker here. Follow this religiously. If you don't follow this, then the unit won't light properly and you'll just be tearing your hair out. And if the unit does happen to cut out, turn everything off, go back to this guide here and then light it up again. So to get started, make sure our pump is in the water here. Give it a shake to remove any sort of water traps or anything, or air traps that might be in there because that can affect the pressure going into the unit. Secondly, make sure our gas is on at our gas tank behind us here. I'm gonna grab the shower raise in my hand. We need to make sure that the middle setting here is on the summer setting. This is following the quick start guide here. Gas control is around to minimum on this side here and water flow is on high, which is around to this side here. They're the settings it needs to be in before we start it. We then grab the shower unit rose here. We flick it to the on position. So I'll push that side in there for on. I'm gonna hold this over the, the bucket here because I'm gonna recycle this water. From there, we come underneath the unit here and we flick the unit on. The pump should start up and the unit should start to flow. So it takes a few seconds. I can hear the unit, it's now, I can hear the burner lighting inside the unit here now. We've got water flowing and it's already up to 30 degrees. Now I have got this recirculating through here so that can make it more efficient because it's sucking in already slightly warm water through the unit and it's reheating it. So it's making it slightly more efficient but that's quite a spread out sort of shower rain head on there. Now to turn this off again, if while we're in the shower, if we want to turn it off, all I need to do is flick this switch back the other way and we'll see the unit shuts off up here. So can, that's now shut off. So there's no water flowing, the water stopped, the gas has stopped, nothing's happening. So I can have a break or do what I want if someone else comes in to use the shower. They don't have to turn it off here, it's happening straight away. If you're leaving the unit for a while, flick it off completely and turn the gas off. But if it's just for a few minutes, you can turn it off here. If we then flick this switch again, we'll see that this then automatically lights up. We'll give it a few seconds. We can hear the piezo click, you can hear a light inside and you can see the temperatures lit up again. Now in terms of adjusting the temperature with the, with the, the dials up here, this is maximum or minimum gas at the moment, sorry, uh, with a high water flow. Now the faster the water flow, the cooler the, the water is because it's moving through the unit, it's not heating up as much. So first thing we can do to heat it up is actually reduce the water flow. So if I dial this down now, we just have a look at what happens with the shower rays there. If I turn that right down to low, we can see the water pressure drops right off, but the temperature, is going to raise probably only by a few degrees. It's going to take a little while for it to flow through because it's right down to a really low pressure. If I was to take the shower rose off altogether, it'll be up to about four litres per minute coming out the tap, but with the shower rose on, it's about three litres. So we can see that temperature has raised. The other thing we can do, and I'm going to dial it around to high again now. So if we want, because most people want a high pressure shower, so we'll dial that, around, dial that around there. Now we're on the summer mode, which means with the gas, we can actually wind it right around to summer max. So which is right around that side there. That's going to increase the heat of the burner inside and we should see this temperature raise just a little bit as well. So that's using more gas, but um, it's uh, more gas and water to get the same temperature. So you kind of need to play around with these dials a little bit. If we're still not happy with the temperature of that guy there, now that's a pretty good temperature for an average shower. That's a, a full, um, full fl three litres per minute flow there and that feels nice and warm up to 43 degrees, it's gradually heating up more and more as we go. Now, if we're still not happy with that, or uh, this, with the water in the bucket here is now warmed up because it's cycled through the unit a fair bit, but if we've got really cold water, less than 10 degrees, we probably need to put this on winter mode. Now, to switch that to winter mode, the first thing we want to do is flick this around to minimum. If we don't, the unit's going to heat up really quickly and cut out. So we flick this around to minimum, we'll leave the water on high still, and we flick this around to winter and we'll hear the unit inside actually burn, uh, um, fire up in full. So I can feel another, I can hear, sorry, another burner or something going on inside there. Now you can see the temperature slowly raising. Now I can wind this around now, it's up to 45, 46 degrees and that's with the gas on minimum here with, with in, uh, in the winter mode. If I turn this around, it should get to about 50 degrees when it reaches winter max here. Actually, that's cut out now. That's a safety mechanism of the unit because the water inside my bucket here is already pretty warm. I don't need this on the winter mode to have a hot shower. So we can tell that it's cut out in two ways. Firstly, the temperature is dropping back down to just the ambient temperature of the water. And secondly, there is a little view window here where the pilot light, where you can see where the pilot light is burning. If I look in there at the moment, there's no blue flame in there, so the gas flame has gone out. So to relight this now, we need to turn it off at the shower rose, so stop the water flow. We go back to our summer setting. Now, if this keeps cutting out, you've got to question whether you need it on the winter setting. 
Once again, if, you, if your ambient water temperature supply is below 10 degrees, use winter. If it's above, use summer. I'm gonna dial this back to minimum, this leaving it on high, and then I can start the unit again. And with that water circulating, the temperature inside of this uh, water is probably gonna be around about 40 to, or low 40s anyway, when that slowly creeps up again. Now bearing in mind, when you're trying to adjust the temperature and, and water flow of your shower here, there's no hard, fast rule around it. Gasmate's general recommendation is to have it on the max setting for whichever um, season mode you're in, and then use the water flow to adjust the te uh, temperature. Because as you lower the water flow, the temperature is going to increase because the water is passing through the heat exchanger at a slower rate. Now that doesn't always work because sometimes you just want a bit more pressure in your shower. So you want that high water flow, which means you might need to play around with which um, season setting you have um, and how much gas you've got coming out. Bearing in mind that you, you don't really want to play around with that maximum temperature to have it cut out because there's nothing worse than having to get out and relight your shower all the time. A couple of other things I mentioned is permanent mounting of this unit is not a legal thing. The Australian Gas Association don't allow units like this to be permanently mounted anywhere, which is why they don't have any brackets or anything on it. It's for a, a, it's a portable unit to be mounted on a stand like this or the side of a vehicle or so on a non-combustible sort of surface. Uh, people also ask if you can have two different outlets on a unit like this. You certainly can. There's nothing readily available, but if you can adapt something to have two, two outlets off of this, um, that would work. Using both at the same time, obviously you're going to have a significantly reduced flow rate and it may affect the, the, how this unit operates, so I'd probably only use one side at a time. It's pretty much all the features of the Gasmate WaterTech hot water system. I reckon it's a pretty simple, reliable, and it's a nice sturdy feeling unit to make sure you've got a nice hot shower or hot water to wash up in, in your campsite, no matter where your adventures take you. You can grab these online at snowys.com.au at our lowest prices every day. If you've got any questions, let us know down in the comments below. Subscribe to our channel, we'll send you all of our latest and greatest information, or check out some other videos like this one down here.